Well, they were here early, the badminton diehards, and the crowds are only going to get bigger as we go through the week, especially if, as expected, China go well. Trying to win this event for a 12th time. Five courts in play in total. On court one, that's where the big story is at the moment. 2-1, the Russians lead the top seeds after that brilliant doubles win for Ivanov and Sozanov. It would be a massive shock if Kermanova took down Okahara, the world number two. But as we've seen so far, you can't take anything for granted. And the other thing now, of course, with the Russians having a 2-1 advantage brings a, a potential injury for either Okahara or the in the women's doubles. If they had to scratch, then obviously Russians would uh, would win. So, not that obviously anyone wants that, but it's just another element of the uh, equation. And that's the problem for Japan when you give your certainly on paper lesser ranked opponents a bit of momentum and they've certainly taken full advantage of it I mean, both of those shock results we've seen Steen, I mean were completely deserved on the balance of play weren't they they were and um, I mean um, if you think the pressure of being the number one seed is too much for you then this is the way to get rid of it because um, the Russians have really played well but on the other hand they need to come down Japan and think hey, this is a group tie. Still have really, really good chances in the last two matches of the tie. Even though we should lose the tie, we still can progress in the tournament. So let's all calm down. So players on court for our women's singles match. Ranked just inside the top 100. Herman over against the world number two. That's the measure of the task she has today. First meeting between these two women. Speed, always a great player to watch. Agility. Bronze at the Olympics in Rio. World champion in Glasgow the year after that when she beat uh, PV Sindhu. And she's actually, even though she's only 24, she's been international for not even a decade. She started young. She won the All Japanese Championships as a 16 year old. Good year last year. One events in Hong Kong, Korea and Thailand, those countries' respective Opens. So that's the bar that Permanova is uh, somehow attempting to scale. You see her ranking way down in the 90s. She actually won a bronze at the European Juniors way back 10 play. years ago. We've got a couple of minor titles, one in Cyprus and one in Croatia, but this would be, by a massive distance, the biggest victory of her career and one of the biggest shocks in Sudan Cup history. You know, Datan's in the umpire's chair and he'll be assisted by a service judge, Mendo Ditu, from France. Ladies and 
gentlemen of the right Japan, represented by Nozomi Okuhara. And on my left, Russia, represented by Natalia Garminova. Russia is so love all. Pemanova will get us started with the world number two Okahara trying to bring her country level up to all. She doesn't need much time to warm up usually, does she? This would be a much bigger shock should Pemanova be able to defeat Okohara than we saw when Malakov um, previously defeated Kenta Nishimoto. And again. The translation of that, if you're wondering, is good luck, you'll need it. Just luck. Needed now, Yugo Kobayashi. We've got a full scale band going on there. It's all, um, Just need someone on lead guitar. guitar with the, uh, <laughs> with the chicken, cheer chicken <laughs> earlier on. <laughs> Meanwhile, this has started off in a one sided fashion. Right shot. And she's Seven, never going to settle, no. at least until she gets one point on the board. Moving over. Challenge. Yeah, it was called in, but she was pretty close to it. And just straight away invited Hawkeye to be the ultimate judge. It may just have been wide. Let's wait for the confirmation. Oh. It's leading, wasn't it? Surprise. Yeah. Well done, my right, judge.
Oh, he's a great play. So 11 points on the spin for Okahara. Coming over, just being rather outclassed at the moment as they go for the mid-game interval. Not a whole lot to discuss there on the uh, Japanese side. <laughs> So now uh, reality has dawned on uh, Natalia Paminova. I guess when she hurt the lineup, she was happy that she got to play. She's not the uh, best of the uh, Russian uh, women singles players. That's Virginia Kusetskaya, the highest ranked. So probably happy to be selected for the team and get a chance to play a match. And then as you see the match progress, you start to dream. You start to say, what if, what if I sealed the Victory, yeah. and then we get on court, and reality kicks in. Gone, I think. And that'll make her feel a whole lot better. It's a bit ironic that she scores the first point with a broken string. to suffer the dreaded bagel. She plays that shot so well. She makes it so easy. About three or four times. Yeah, in the same corner. To perseverance there. Turning over. It's a good get. Because the other shots that Okuhara plays from the same position, they look that that cross shot looks exactly like the clears and the straight shots. So deceptive overhead shot from uh, Okuhara, and it's really hard to read. Changed his mind there. Nine judge initially signaled it good and then stretched his arms out. No challenge though from Okahara.
Double solo. Five, seventeen. A couple of mistakes from Okohara caused the um, absolute top concentration has gone because she knows that she's going to win this match. She can feel that from the shots that uh, she's 18. receiving from her opponent. Five. She knows that this is this is going to be a win. match except a point for Japan uh, for Okohara it's not like she gets really accustomed to the playing conditions and so on because there's too big a difference in strength playing strength between these two women So 21 points to six in double quick time, about 11 or 12 minutes. So normal order kind of has been restored here after shock results in the last two matches. Coming over now knows if she didn't before. The exact высоко отбросила, она там ошиблась, понимаешь? Тебе все время на траектории играть, а ты хочешь играть на скорость. Да быстрее она тебя, понимаешь? Ничего ты на скорость не сделаешь. Ты можешь единственное, когда вот ну где-то ее загонишь, там ударить вниз на скорости. Все остальное должна быть глубина. Назад повыше. Смотри, в левую сторону укороченность сыграла, влево. Нельзя ей туда высоко отбрасывать э, в угол, потому что он набитый так, что она тебе вкладывает там постоянно. Поэтому отброс вот сюда делаем, в центр, чтобы ей не набитый удар был. Ты поняла? Ага. И здесь вот ищешь такие моменты. С подачи давай подумаем. Но нельзя ей плоскую подачу подавать. Она маленького роста, ей удобно. Она пик себе на скорости, все. Короткую. Короткую, Короткую ближе к центру, понимаешь? Не в середину площадки, а ближе к центру, на крестик. Чтобы ей надо было руку уставить так, чтобы ты могла через твою ракетку летела это. saying to Perminova, try and build up her confidence a little bit. Took her about 13 or 14 points, didn't it, to win a point in the uh, opening game. Now she's won the first two, the second game. 
Colts third floor call. Right. It looked high that service from the beginning. One, two. Excellent play. the advantage of playing up against the drift so she doesn't have to think too much about um, her shots long coaching Trevor agents have told me that uh, Marova, the Russian uh, coach said that um, she had to think about what kind of shots made her points in the first game which is of course the only right way to do it if you won points in one way you should try and do more of that and that was uh, when she blocked some of the shots from uh, Okuhara and played short and then when she played good lifts as well so that was part of the plan coming forward. Well, it's proved much more competitive so far in the game two. Emphasizing also shot placement than speed because um, Okamara was faster than uh, Paminova and um, I don't think anyone can disagree with Claudia Mayerova that that is in fact the case. That's well placed, good quality on that shot. On the line. 
Terrific shot. Seven, six. They still have the rest of the translation of the um, coaching interval coming in here because she's had a lot to say, Claudia Meyer over. She also emphasized that uh, Natalia Pemanova needed to play really close to the baseline, have good length on her shots. And uh, it's more easy in this second game where she's playing up against the drift. Well, you can certainly see the difference in just their body language in this game compared to the last. Yeah, but uh, I think also she must say to herself, hey, okay, now we've seen how how bad it can go, so from here on it can um, it can only go um, yeah. better. Yeah. She's played really well in this second game. Yeah. Seven, six. Seven, Quality in this second game Eight. from Permanova. So, can't be too unhappy about that. You can't expect all your shots to suddenly uh, hit their targets. You must allow yourself to make a couple of mistakes. Great save. Yeah, super reactions. She did what she had to do. Pam. But when you think uh, mid-game interval in the first game, it was 11 love. Huh? She has been we'll way still more still competitive. Still She's got to try and lift her again for the second part of this game. То есть она у тебя глубоко, ты ее туда отодвигаешь, здесь. Пусть он медленнее этот удар, мягче, но он глубоко летит и ей трудно. Поняла? А ускоряешь уже тогда, когда тебе удобно, тогда ты можешь ее где-то двинуть. Еще подачу не делаешь на центр. Еще выиграл много нестандартными отбросами сюда. Укороченным в центре, помнишь? Так ищи такие варианты. Ten, 
It's going to be difficult for Pominova to uh, win this second game, let alone win the match. But at least she's doing uh, the best she can here. And uh, well, shots like that, shots like that will help. Yeah. And what she has managed to do, because that first game, it must have given her something of an inferiority complex. So she's Seems to have dispelled that completely, and she goes on to lose this second game. That was a bit careless, though. Had to work so hard to win a point against Okahara. Don't want to chuck it away with a serve like that. the right decision this time. very shortly 16 12 Without a fight here. No, no, she's not. That's really well played by um, Natalia Pamela. But even if she should lose this match, she can um, take some confidence um, back in practice. Well, I guess not much to lose at this uh, juncture. I don't think. It's going to prove successful, but also a bit of a breather as well. Yeah, challenge try. unsuccessful. One challenge remaining. She's Stop probably pace, played at a higher pace in this second game than she's used to, and um, need that, needs that little break. <laughs> oh, 
bang on the line. <laughs> she could easily have played that. No, that's going to go wide, but no such luck. Still, we'll look at over the line here, the Japanese. do nicely 21 points to 16 in the second game a game in which Natalia Permanova was way way more competitive so credit to her for that but the whole match around about half an hour and it means now that Japan level the tie to all with just the women's doubles to come Confirming that score, 21-6, 21-16. 31 minutes, the match time. The women's doubles, the decider is next. <laughs> 